Hey folks, Alan Manick, the Hot Rod Hippie here, coming to you from Houlihan's Hot Rod Shop in Mooresville, North Carolina. Today we're going to be doing a little de demonstration on TIG welding here. We're going to do silicon bronze welding. Dan Houlihan's going to demonstrate that for us and show us how he uses it when he builds high-end custom cars. So let's check it out. Through my workshops that I have once a month here at my shop, we concentrate on TIG welding and some mild fabrication. A lot of questions I get at the workshop and car building itself through guys that have come to the open house uh, or just stop in for a visit. They look at my welds and they wonder what the shiny bronze looking color weld is. A lot of guys think it's brazing. Uh, the novice not really introduced to this type of welding. It's uh, silica bronze fill rod. For I've been using this stuff for years growing up through my dad's HVAC shop all the way through working the rad rides to Detroit Speed to now to my own shop. It's strictly lap welds only, inside corner welds. It's low, lower heat, easier to grind. It's rust friendly. Uh, it's great for filling little pinholes, little rust pinholes like in window beds or whatever. It's a little unique welding with it. It's different than steel rod. It's a combination of steel rod and maybe aluminum mixed together. It's kind of what I call mushy. It's a mushy type feel. Don't do a lot of metal finishing on it. It's not for butt welding. Just for example, if you butt welded a seam and metal finish that seam with the silicon bronze, that seam is going to break. Uh, it does have some tensile strength to it, but not like steel rod. It's just a good overall general type rod that I use for lap welding, like especially on unibody cars. You're relying on a 50-year-old spot weld versus uh, a butt weld. So it's always good. I use it for a lot of lap joints. And again, it's it's a real easy, friendly rod, but a lot of guys really don't know what it is. So I use it, I use it here in my workshops. This is an inside, this is a mock-up inside corner weld. I made these two pieces and I just turned a little flange here and tacked it on the back side. Now I can, if I wanted to, I can go back and tack that inside weld, depending on the application, to either silica bronze or I can tack it with steel rod too. And the silica bronze will flow right over that. This gives you a good example of the heat zone on each side of the weld because it doesn't require, doesn't require as much heat. I think I'm running about 45 amps on this, and this is 18 gauge, but you can see the heat zone on each side. If that was steel, I think the, the heat zone would, would increase on each side of that weld. And you can kind of tell if you're set at the right amperage just by how the TIG rod flows in as you're welding and the color of the weld when you're done. If it's essentially the same color as your silica bronze fill rod, you're, you're doing a good job. Otherwise, if it starts turning gray uh, or kind of crusty looking or a grayish, blackish looking color, you're way too hot. And you can always tell that too by your heat zone. If you got a lot of heat in it, that heat zone is going to increase on each side. Typically, the unibody cars will have factory spot welds through this area here. Um, again, they're 50 year old plus spot welds that you're relying on not breaking at some point. But if you ever get a chance to use the silica bronze on a joint, it strengthens that weld, I call it tightening up the car, and it gets, well, it gets rid of any uh, seam sealer you may need for that joint. Again, that's a, good, that's a good amp setting because of the color of the weld. That's a good indicator. And, you know, the heat zone, I actually could have probably picked up the pace a little bit on this one, because uh, the heat zone is a little wider, but that's, I think that's the nature of the beast of the seam. Now, when you're welding a lot of lap joint type welds on these unibody cars, you need to scrape out that seam sealer as much as you can. Because if you don't, you're gonna play hell. And I do it all the time. And it seems to me like, even if you think you got it all out, I compare it to soldering copper pipe that you think you got all the water out of it is out of it. And as soon as you strike the arc, it seems like that seam sealer, what's ever left under that joint, will come to the edge and blow out your weld. And that in that scenario, you just gotta deal with it. You gotta weld it, sometimes you gotta weld it. My welds on a joint like that are, they look like they're garbage, but they're not. So I'll weld it and I'll grind it down a little bit and knock out a lot of the impurities and wire brush it and then I'll wash over it again. And depending on where the weld's at, you really, ne you don't necessarily need to metal finish it or grind it. On a weld that's, that's you know, a pretty clean weld like that, depending on where it's at, by the time you primer it, epoxy primer and go over with primer, it's, it fills in and it's nice. A lot of these seam welds that I do are on Camaros or where the firewall laps underneath the cowl. I'll weld them seams, I'll tack it really good. 
then I'll weld them seams with silica bronze, and then I'll grind them down. Yeah, it's gonna take a little finger swipe of body filler to get that nice consistent seam. But what it, need, what, what it does is it eliminates the seam sealer. It strengthens the weld and eliminates that seam sealer, which is the best thing, especially when you're going with a nice finish inside engine bay satin finish color. Uh, you gotta be really light on the touch with the grinder. Uh, get a fresh disc, I use the 3M 50 grit disc, uh, the best disc out there for the money. You're grinding the weld, you concentrate on the weld. But once you, if you start seeing sparks, that you're, you're into the base material. So the silica bronze is essentially acting like a guide coat. So once you see sparks, then you're kind of, you're getting to the point where you're actually grinding too much of the weld away. With the silica bronze, it's so nice that you could actually grind most of the weld with these brown uh, Scotch-Brite Rolock discs. But that just kind of gives you an idea what the finish uh, grinding would look like. Again, this is a perfect case scenario. Shear, brake, bench, weld, grind. You're not upside down and everything else trying to grind that stuff. It was brought to my attention through my son to actually think about offering workshops. It kind of struck a nerve with me and that, that was a few years ago. And it's, ever since then, I've been doing some planning and I actually launched, last year, January of 18, I launched my, my workshop, weekend workshop program. Uh, it's once a month here at the shop. Uh, it's, a, it's a beginner introduction to TIG welding and to some what I consider mild custom fabrication. Uh, it's geared towards the guy uh, or girl that's uh, interested in TIG welding and fabricating, maybe think about this is what he wants, he or she wants to do, or for a guy that's building his car in his garage and he's got a MIG welder and he's used to MIG welding but he's thinking about TIG welding because he sees it on TV or he sees it on social media. But he wants to try it, but he doesn't want to make the investment in the machine. Well, you can come here and, and then spend a day with me and a few other guys and get your and have hands on. Uh, that's the only way you're going to get a little bit of experience. You know, through the day it leads into fabrication, metal finishing, and so on. Now we will, starting in 19, I will advance my workshops into a, right now it's a one day workshop. I think eventually, probably towards the spring, it's gonna be a two day workshop. The first day will be beginner. And for the traveler that comes in to the workshop for Saturday, he can stay a Sunday, he can stay Sunday as well and go right into a, either a alternate welding instruction for aluminum or stainless or an intermediate type fabrication uh, experience, which is a little bit more advanced from the day before. Thank you to Dan Houlihan for having us here and demonstrating silicon bronze welding to us today. It's a technique that I was familiar with, but personally I don't really integrate into my workflow. I think I'm going to be giving it a try in the future here on some upcoming projects. Do you think this is something you might be interested in learning or checking out? You can find links in the description below to Dan's website. You can come here and take a workshop class with him and learn hands-on doing actually trying things out for yourself. If you're not familiar with TIG welding, like he mentioned before, this could be a great way for you to come and try it out before you invest in a machine that's gonna cost you a bunch of money and find out maybe it's not for you. I really recommend it. It's what I use on almost everything, so maybe it's something you wanna check out. Go ahead and check out that link in the description down below. Drop a video a like if you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of this video? What do you think of this demonstration, this shop stuff? Maybe you are interested in taking class. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.